Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, good morning. You're watching Trading Hour on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ekta Batra. With me is Prashant Nair and it's turning out to be a good steady start for us this week. We're up around half odd percent currently for the Nifty. We have a good advanced decline ratio on our hands as well. So going steady, going strong as we speak. And we have a lot of stocks to discuss. Larson and Tubro, for example, is up around 5.6%. Infosys has recovered from the day's low. So that stock is in focus. And we have a couple of others which we, we will be talking about, the likes of Axis, which is at a fresh 52-week high and Federal Bank, which is down around 5-odd percent. A lot of pharmaceutical stops, stocks buzzing in trade as well. But uh, we have a good day on our hands with regards to the market and courtesy Prashant, it's your birthday as well. Maybe it's a little bit of the sparkle falling off. Thanks very much. I'd like to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> that would highly unlikely, but uh, thanks again uh, for that. But it's good going, uh, Ekta. 68-odd points higher. Uh, and, you know, it's all the more remarkable, Ekta, because if you look at the MSCI Emerging Market Index, mm. it, uh, as of Friday's close, I didn't check the change today, but the MSCI Emerging Market Index from its life high is down 24%. Mm. The Indian market, the Nifty in dollar terms, I mean, like-to-like -like comparison, the, uh, the Nifty index is down 7%. Mm. So there is a huge outperformance which is underway. And I'm not talking about YTD or, you know, three months. I'm talking about life high to life high, the MSCI EM index, of which India is a part with about an 8-9% weight, and, I mean, uh, the index itself. So, I mean, there is this huge outperformance which is going on. And I would say that it is looking even more remarkable because look at what is happening to the Chinese markets. I mean, the big, uh, the big one here in Asia, apart from Japan. I mean, Japan is okay, but China is the one which incrementally moves things up or down. The Shanghai is, uh, is at uh, a new low. You've got the Shenzhen, which is looking weak. Uh, the property, the Chinese property index, I think the Shenzhen, Shenzhen property index, that is actually breaking down. Uh, so, you know, in the face of all of that, for the market here to not be flat, but to be up 70 points, uh, I think it's, 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 uh, it's quite something. And we'll uh, talk more about this as we kind of go along. We'll bring in more stocks, etc. as well. Sudarshan Sukhani of S2Analytics.com is uh, with us, as always, at the top of the uh, show. Sudarshan, why don't you set things up for us? What would your reading be uh, when you look at the screen and what would you trade? Yeah, good morning again. See, when we look at the screen, we see lifetime new highs. And lifetime new highs are almost always bullish. So the trade is, and that this trade is continuing for many days now. All of last week, I was saying buy on every dip, buy on every dip. And luckily, Prashant, last week, the market gave us multiple dips. Today, there is no dip, but you still want to buy the Nifty. Maintain your long positions. Uh, while we cannot say where the markets will go, we do see 12,000 in front of us, a nice round number. Let's see what happens. But the important part is to be on the long side of the market. Focus on the Nifty because the Nifty Bank continues to underperform. So let's focus on the primary index and be long there. Hmm. So that's an, uh, morning. In terms of specific stocks then, what would you be strategizing or recommending? Well, uh, we go for uh, mid-caps because this is a good time for good quality mid-caps to do well. So starting with RBL Bank, where the bank, where the share price has bottomed out and is now looking ahead. RBL Bank, Yes Bank are some of the banks that should do much better, outperform. So for today, I'm suggesting buying RBL Bank. Then we have Britannia, part of the FMCG pack. Britannia is an outperformer and is likely to move ahead. So today, also consider buying Britannia and Voltas. Voltas is the third buy. Voltas has gone through a minor correction, is now re reaching towards lifetime new highs soon enough. So stay with, today the theme is to be with good quality mid caps, which are outperforming. Hmm. Okay, uh, that point's taken. Let's get in a couple of uh, Twitter queries then for you, uh, Sudarshan. Kiran writes to us on Twitter. He has 500 shares of HUEC, which is bought at 134.2, short term investor, wants to know whether to hold or sell. HOEC. Well, you sell. See, this market is at lifetime new highs, and if your stock is not performing, it's distinctly underperforming, then we don't, and that's also a mid cap. We don't want to stay with it. So, my suggestion is please sell and exit. <coughs> All right, Sudarshan, we'll speak again soon. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate you joining in. 
uh, right now. You know, I just want to highlight what's happening with uh, <coughs> one st particular stock, Tata Motors. I mean, if you can have that up. Uh, after, it's actually done well uh, last three days or so, uh, but it's coming off extremely depressed levels. It broke down to 243 kind of levels, uh, what, I think uh, last Thursday or Wednesday it, it was, and it's at about 266. So there is some recovery which seems to be setting in. But around this 266, 270 levels, it's, uh, you know, not very far back. I think within this month, uh, it, had, it had gotten to about 270 and then sold off to about 245-ish kind of level. So let's see if this can, uh, this 270-odd mark can be taken out or uh, that proves to be another uh, hurdle once again. Rahul Shah is also with us for some FNO st uh, strategies. He's Vice President and Equity Advisory Group, Motila Loswal. Rahul, morning. Thanks very much. What would you be trading? Yeah, hi, morning. I think uh, obviously we've been seeing that uh, markets are on fire since last few sessions and, and I think the rally is getting it more uh, uh, impacted with a uh, lot of stocks and sectors uh, and precisely earlier which was different only for a few stocks. So I think uh, three long ideas from my side, one is from the NBFC space, l and Housing Finance. Uh, we've been seeing this stock uh, consolidated between 160 to 175 and it has come out from that and uh, we've seen the fresh longs being added up today's session. So with a, a strict stop loss of 182, I would go long on uh, L&D Finance with a target of 200. Second is on a metal pack, I think we've seen Tata still rising up uh, slowly and steadily in last uh, two, three sessions. And in today's session also, we, we feel that stock can still go higher from the current levels. So I would go long on Tata still with a stop loss of 577 and target of 610. And uh, third stock being Bharat Forge. And last two sessions, we've seen a uh, good uh, longs built up in this stock. So I would go long on Bharat Forge with a stop loss of 630 and target of 665. Okay. All right, Rahul, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and giving us all of those strategies. Well, after almost two weeks of incessant downpour resulting in a flood situation in Kerala, normal life has come to a standstill. Businesses too have been hit and one such uh, business or one such bank that is situated there is Federal Bank, which in fact is headquartered in the state itself. To take stock of the situation and what the impact is on the business, we have Mr. Sham Srinivasan, the MD and CEO of Federal Bank now joining in to talk to us. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, hi, thanks very much for joining in uh, this morning. Firstly, if you can just give us a ground check in terms of what exactly is happening in the state right now in terms of the rescue efforts, as well as how exactly has Federal Bank been impacted say in terms of a couple of your branches which are situated in the areas that have been impacted the most. Thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, yes, it's been uh, a period of uh, extreme stress for everybody, all residents here. Uh, most of Kerala is now uh, sort of over the worst and people are resuming or beginning to resume their normal lives and trying to rebuild. Uh, you might have read and seen certainly that there have been extreme cases of people struggling to get out of their homes and ensure that uh, they're safe. Uh, I'm happy that uh, that part is pretty much addressed and now it's really the uh, comeback and build back of many areas. Uh, most areas that were low-lying and in and around the riverbed have been the maximum impacted. And that's about four or five specific locations which will have the build back will take much longer. Uh, I think the key point, the key point is that there is an enormous amount of uh, resilience. Uh, I'm reminded of the days when uh, we were in the uh, either 9/11 or the 26/11 in Mumbai or any of that. How people come back, uh, and this being such a magnitude, the comeback has been remarkable. I've had great opportunity to go and interact with so many people who are struggling. Uh, the confidence, the, the composure, and the willingness to come back is extremely good. For us in the bank, uh, barring about 30 branches across the state, uh, everybody is back to work, every system is back, and those 30 will take maybe like till Wednesday to come back. So largely, uh, we are in comeback mode. I don't see uh, loss of uh, continuity of work or business. Yes, people will take a lot of uh, efforts in bringing back livelihoods, particularly people upstream who have had challenges in there. Uh, plantations. So that's going to be something that has to be assessed. But in short, uh, the worst is over. People are coming back very resiliently. Uh, I read somewhere today said, what does recede? Morale rises. So I think that's the 
key takeaway, I would say, at this point in time, and the bank, we are back again. Uh -huh. uh, so, you're saying uh, 30, except 30 branches, all the other branches are working uh, normally. How many branches yeah, yeah. do you have in Kerala, sir? We through the worst period, which was Thursday, Friday, last week, uh, which is when the sort of maximum downpour, maximum disruption, out of our roughly 600 branches in Kerala, even in that period, half of them were able to do some skeleton work because people were disrupted in most of the system. Hmm. As of this morning, 557 branches are up and running. 37 branches or 34 branches are the ones who are uh, beginning to come back. That may take till end of the day or worst case tomorrow. Hmm. Uh, thankfully, this week has some holidays. So the comeback is uh, to that extent protected faster. Mr. Srinivasan, uh, so okay, let's just uh, put some more numbers to this. Uh, I was reading that you have for about 45% of your business comes from Kerala. Is, am, I, am I right? Uh, no. The way it works, Prashant, is 30% of our credit book is in Kerala. Okay. And 65% of our deposits book is in Kerala. Of the 30%, 35% of credit book, about one third of that is corporate large ticket government business. Retail and mid market and SME is about 25,000 crores, about 20, 25,000 crores. That's about 25% of our business. And uh, the deposit business is the reverse, about 60, 65,000 crores is from Kerala. Okay, just uh, just to break, uh, sorry, uh, so 30% of your credit book is in Kerala, which is basically 30% of your advances are in Kerala. Uh, uh, and you broke that down uh, to say 25% is retail and SME, right? Uh, and no, 25% of our All India book is retail and SME. So could, you break class, down, could you break Kerala, down? Which is, yeah. Okay, could you break down 30% uh, advances in Kerala for us? Uh, how much is retail? How much is corporate? Yeah. yeah. About 6,000 crores, 6,500 crores of the 32,000 crores is corporate. So roughly retail SME is about 25,000 crores of Kerala. 23, 25, give or take around that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, uh, you're probably expecting your SME and Agri big book to be impacted the most in terms of exposure uh, within the space impacted, right? In Kerala? Yeah, I think it is too early to comment. Uh, you know, when the demonetization happened, we all panicked that life will fall apart. Hmm. Within weeks, banks were back and we were back in action. <laughs> I treat this on the similar, I'm not diminishing or downplaying the challenge, hmm. but I would hesitate to make any guesses at this point in time, the magnitude of the damage. We know it's uh, very disruptive, but I also believe that uh, each bank and the regulators will deal with it in a very sensible manner. So I'm not uh, yet in any kind of uh, uh, judgment on how bad or how deep the problem is. Hmm. To, my mind, to my mind, for sure, the comeback uh, in some of these areas will be very slow. I mean, when we were in the middle of it on Thursday, even I was worried whether we'd be able to get, get back to work. Today, we are all back in full flow, and uh, people have to live, right? People have to win back their own uh, life. So I'm quite confident that uh, this we should not over-trumpet the problem and create a situation. Uh, I think I think the maximum impact would be in certain pockets, which has to be dealt with sensibly, just like the way various other crises have been dealt with. In such but a you case, will see the comeback is quite significant and slow. In such a case, in any case, uh, the RBI would probably provide some amount of leeway, some kind of special dispensation as they have in past cases, right? No, like they have given some relief on the customers based on GST. They have given up till December. So through SLBC, through IBA and ourselves, we are reaching out to RBI, presenting the case. Uh, we may not get an uh, outcome in, in a few days, but I'm sure by end of the month, there will be clarity on the regulatory forbearance, if there is any, that can be brought to customers, because they surely need uh, time to regroup. And that will, I think, be the focus. But I can't say that just now, but through SLBC, through IBA, and directly, we'll reach out to RBI and present this. So we may expect something by end of the month. Okay, expect something by the end of the month. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, out of the loan book, could you uh, 
uh, you know, uh, give us some idea. I mean, you know, uh, waters are still receding, so the assessment of the damage will take uh, take some time to begin with. But in your experience, which parts of the loan book, the lending book, uh, are likely to see stress? I mean, if you can just give us some color in your experience, where is the stress likely to emerge in? What is going to happen, Prashant, is, and I, from your surname, I'm sure that you have connections in Kerala. Yes, I do, sir. I here. do. Yes. There are pockets where the waters have entered homes and disrupted very materially. So things like furniture, just rebuild of homes, electrical stuff, all that is going, including my, the place I live. So all of us are impacted to some extent in this. Uh, so the real issue is around rebuild. Physically, houses breaking down, uh, people losing property is not is not that significant of the people who have had bank borrowing. There may be people downstream or upstream in the river, Iduki area where they have lost physically. That is a very different, uh, I won't think that's a natural bank borrow profile. Mm. So we have to uh, treat this at two levels. One is that the human element people are suffering. Second is how do banks deal with customers who have issues. Mm. So the rebuild of buying more furniture, buying TVs, getting your wiring, getting your bed set is actually going to be consuming, consumption positive. Mm. Where will they get the money? There has to be banks and some sensible loaning process has to happen. All of us are announcing stuff. Mm. So I think this has to be seen very differently as in it's a basket case. <laughs> and I just saw this morning there's an overreaction by every media. As though there's a, everything is collapsed and life will come to a halt. I mean, all of us are back to work. I think we should watch out from a point of view of how does the rebuild happen and what's the loss that people have to bring back. The immediate need will be just the simple stuff like getting a bed, chair, sofas, yeah, television, yeah. fridge, uh, all this either working or buy. So that's going to be one set of issues that will be dealt with. Uh, businesses being lost, inventories that people are holding on autos, uh, those will have challenges. Then the comeback of businesses, whether it is uh, seafood, I don't think they will be impacted. Whether people getting back to work, everybody has to live, so that's not going to be impacted. Metro is up and about on day two. I was transported in the metro. Mm. So I don't think those will suffer in any sense. I think what will happen near term is the confidence building giving immediate support to get back to homes, cleaning up roads, cleaning up the slushy areas, mm. which will happen, I think, over the next three, four days. It helps that a few holidays, so disruption to that extent is lower. But to my mind, if I speak to you, end of August, the story will be very different. Very, uh, okay, very different and uh, much better, hopefully. Uh, Absolutely. It Let's absolutely hope so. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, could you, uh, would you have the breakup in terms of what is, in terms of advances, how much of this advances uh, in Kerala as a state are concentrated in these particular districts, Aluwa, Vayanad, Patanam Tata? I mean, if you can give us some idea, what percentage of the book is in these uh, areas? I will tell you, I will tell you, Prashant, if you take our 590 branches in Kerala, hmm. Around 75, 80 branches is in the territory you mentioned right now. Okay. Where I moved my office from Alwa to Irnakulam today, where I'm sitting, I wouldn't even know that there was a event happening only 20 kilometers from here. Okay, mm. okay. Right? Uh, so, Irnakulam mercifully is not impacted. Mm. The big uh, commercial centers of Trivandrum or the major towns are less impacted. Mm. Tourism destinations like Vayanad, Munnar, Shabarimala, uh, uh, Alua, for a uh, reason, Chengenu, these are places that are impacted. So the impact can be on arrivals, Kochi Airport being suspended for a period of 10 days. So thankfully, the alternate location is the first commercial flight has landed today. Mm, mm. So I think the resilience of comeback is strong. Mm. Uh, the business impact, I would think, this is a guess I'm hazarding, about 10% of the branches, 10 to 15% of our branches are in this territory. Mm. I'm just taking a proxy of that as the business. So mm. you're talking about 15% of the business credits of our bank, and therefore similar for many parts of the uh, other lenders. Mm. So you could argue 15% of the credit book of the state, which to my mind is about 3 lakh crores, could be the challenge. Mm. Okay. In terms of, uh, just one last question, sir, from my side. 
uh, in terms of crops being damaged and that kind of thing, well, would, would I be wrong in saying that the dependence on short crops, I mean, paddy, etc., over time is reduced? And I mean, we're ta talking more about you know rubber and uh, uh, that kind of thing, right? I mean, uh, uh, plantations, etc. So vibrant of agri economy, right? Food is largely imported from outside. Correct. So then the latter uh, is so less affected because of uh, the floods, etc. I mean, short crops are washed away, which is not the case. Rubber is not, but yeah. the argument is rubber prices may go up. Hmm. So to some extent, it will offset the loss of plantation. Okay. And also, uh, dependence on livestock, etc. Like, for example, what we had uh, we, seen in the case of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, where the dependence on livestock rearing, etc. is very high. In Kerala, that's not the, that's not the case, right? Yes, right. Okay. All right. Just one. Yeah, I, uh, I don't want to diminish this as a non-event or, uh, you know, each institution. No, no, absolutely. Right? absolutely. For us, mm. over the last six, seven years, our non-Kerala business is now 75% of our flow. Mm. Kerala business is a large remittance business. I see both rupee where it is and the need for money coming in. Remittance will increase at least 40%, which will be a massive benefit. Rebuild will be a massive benefit. Demand consumption increase because of people having to get their life back. Some challenges in geography that need infra improvement. That's the commitment of the state. I think that will happen. And there's resources is not going to be the issue. It's the smartness of utilization of the resources will be the issue. Okay. All right. Uh, just before we wrap up then, sir, just a quick uh, summary. You are expecting some amount of special dispensation probably coming in from the Reserve Bank of India. You don't have a clear idea in terms of what the NPA slippage could be from the event as of now. And net-net, uh, there could be a credit positive come through simply because of the consumption uh, demand which could increase on account of the damage. Is that correct? Your last point, surely, yes. On the first point, with the regulator and the dispensation, I, it's a request. I don't know what the outcome will be. The credit pain uh, may not be very deep for long. If at all, it could be a few few months and it sort itself out. And if the dispensations come, even that will get sorted out. Uh, I think the focus near term is really the... Um, sort of strong comeback and building yeah. back. And there is this real, and I say this not because I live here, it is just quite amazing. Uh, you know, we used to trumpet Mumbai's resilience. You'd be surprised at the resilience and the confidence and the... I've not seen even one person who's complained about this event yet. And I've had the chance of uh, doing many things here the recent few days to just get lives back. It's Got just it, quite sir. remarkable. Mr. Srinivasan, thank you very much uh, for joining us and patiently answering all those questions. Very useful conversation, uh, not just from a business point of view, but I think you gave a real color of what's going on in the ground. As you said, I mean, for example, the first flight uh, landed and uh, uh, that kind of uh, color, important. Thanks very much. Appreciate you joining in. And our thoughts and prayers, of course, with everyone, uh, all of you there in Kerala. And uh, uh, we, we hope that things come back to normalcy, as you said, uh, in the next uh, many days. Yeah, when I give you an update in September, it'll be a... Quite it'd an be, be, absolutely. Look forward to it, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is uh, the management at Federal Bank uh, uh, giving us uh, some real color on what's happening on the ground. Five percent lower. It's lost, I think, about eight or nine percent in the last two trading sessions. Markets uh, seventy points higher. Eleven thousand five hundred and forty is where we stand. We take a very quick break here. The first of the show. So we'll come right back. We focus on what's happening uh, in the world of commodities. We have uh, another update uh, from uh, Kerala coming in. As Mr. Srinivasan pointed out, rubber prices are expected to go up. Manisha Gupta, my colleague, speaks with Mr. G.P. Goel, Kochi Rubber Merchants Association, uh, in just a bit. Back in two.